let's uh, talk about this James Bradbury thing. Uh, you know, we reported uh, in our last podcast that the Eagles had injury. You, you really hit this on the head because when we talked about it, you said, look, they're interested um, and it's all going to come down to, to money. And, you know, he wound up signing a contract that um, it's going to be about seven and a half million, I think was guaranteed and a chance to earn up to 10 million, Adam. And you had talked about some of the finances earlier. So you, you can say that that's pretty good money for a guy who is on the market this late in, in June, or I'm sorry, in May. Um, but that's what you said, that he's not just going to settle for anything, and he didn't have to. So our, our understanding was uh, all the teams you and I talked to last week, they all said $10 million was the number. Now, $10 million per season. So he had a chance to sign, as I understand it, for more than a year. Mm-hmm. But the structure, the guarantees in year one are strong. So if – Think of it. If, if I'm James Bradbury and I'm not getting any guaranteed money in year two, why the heck would I sign for more than a one year deal? Right. It's not right. like and then you're in the team's hands. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So, so the leverage would be in a, in a sense with him. If he just takes a one year deal, if he plays well, who knows? The Eagles would want him back and we'll get into what this means. But uh, I, I just think the Eagles felt that well, we know this. He was the top free agent corner on their board. That's why we talked about him last week after he was, after he was cut. The thing that I find interesting is that, he could not reach an extension, uh, a revised deal with the Texans. It, uh, Joe Shane talked about that, the GM of the Giants. And the, uh, another thing we didn't, there were a couple of things we didn't talk about last week, which um, we'll, we could talk about now. We have a little bit more information. But you know, one of the things that uh, the, you know, the Giants made it pretty clear, he just did not fit. They're going to play a lot of man. Remember, Wink Martindale is their, their D coordinator. They, they're going to play a high percentage of man comparable to other teams. That doesn't work for him. Right. He got his big free agent deal with the Giants because he's one of the better known corners in the NFL. He was. Mm-hmm. Uh, two years ago, Pro Bowl, made it, voted in. It was not a fake one, which we've talked about for years on the show, where I don't like the Pro Bowl, to be honest with it. Not only did I not like the game, I just I, I hate it when people vote on who've never seen players. I think it's wrong. I think it, it, players should vote for it and executives. Hmm. Okay? Or and coaches, too, right? Coaches, coaches yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, good call. Yeah. People who actually see these players. I mean, I had a former Eagles player who everyone would know tell me he would give it to PR to fill out for them. He had no mm-hmm. interest in voting for it. Come on, man. It's, it's not right. Yeah. So, But it was legitimate. He was really terrific two years ago. Dropped off. I know you've got some great stuff from one of your sources we want to get to in a minute. Yeah. Um, but here's the issue, the one issue that I have with it. Though we think they might play some man, this plays into your per, your personnel source. He made his money as being one of the top zone corners in the league. And, he's, again, it's not like he's washed up. He's, he just didn't have a good year. Right. But if they don't play a lot, if they don't play a high percentage of zone, remember they, they played the most zone for the in the NFL last season, an unbelievable 91% in the first half of the season. <laughs> right. So now if, if, if Gannon's not playing a high percentage of zone, is this going to work? Well, I, I, that's a great question. And um, I, I think you could look at it two ways. One, I think he obviously wants to play zone. He started off last year, as you meant, just mentioned, playing a ton of zone, and it didn't work. He tried to play two safeties deep. It didn't work. They were just gashed against the run. But look at the moves they've made this offseason. They add a guy like Jordan Davis, who's going to occupy two gaps at one time. Right? He's going to line up over the nose and, and make it easier on the linebackers. Right? Um, they upgraded linebackers. I mean, their starting linebackers could be entirely new. It could be Kazir White and Nicobe Dean. All right. And then theoretically, they are going to play more either quarters or two shell coverages where both safeties are back. And now that you've got a safety out of the box and back, you have to be able to stop the run. But again, we just talked about Jordan Davis and the new linebacker. So I feel like he's aligning himself with the personnel they brought in to play a lot of zone. Hassan Reddick. Is not a is a, is a linebacker, not at the end on first and second down. You don't want him dropping into too much coverage on these play action pass on first and second down. You want to play a zone behind that so that while he can still rush the passer, if they if they throw the quick curl right, that somebody's there to defend it or in the flat. So that to me all yells they're going to play more zone defense. But you bring up a great point. If it don't work and they got to switch to man, what do you do with James Bradbury in that situation? But Adam, I still think. Even in that situation, he's an upgrade over Steven Nelson. 